Hey guys, and welcome back to Chicken Wing Express. That girl let her go? Mel, you're solid. Huh? That guy's naked. Ew. Wait, what the freak? This ain't no joke. What's going on? Shut up. Come closer, and I'll kill her? What the frick? That ain't my big boss. Sorry. But you're not going to get the chance. Is this a TV show? Why is there film grain? Huh. Okay. Well, that sucked. I wish that guy just, I don't know, didn't do that. Wait, what? Phoenix, what's going on? I'm reading through the file of an old court case. It was the first case of my long-time mentor, Mia Fey. What? Fugitive di What? What the crud's going on? Huh? Terry Fallis. Kidnapping. Murderer. Death penalty. Uh... Well, Mia's not judge, jury, and executioner. What? After escaping, Fallis met with and then murdered Sergeant Valerie Hawthorne. Recaptured? What? Hawthorne? Her very first client was a death row inmate who had recently broken out of prison. That was a whole year before me and I ever met. Uh, uh, wait, why is Phoenix in the hospital? What the heck's going on? I don't understand. Six years earlier, Mia Fey, first trial. What the dump? Huh? huh? So, was that Phoenix in the hospital because he ate the glass bottle? And they're like, what is going on? Yeah. I'm so nervous. I feel like I'm going to die. I never should have accepted this case. Look at him! <laughs> I mean, uh, good morning, sir. Don't be so jumpy, Mia. Everyone deserves their day in court. I didn't do nothing. I swear it, I did not kill anybody! No! Terry Fallis. My first client. You know, that voice sucks. I'm gonna do a different one. F it. You know, we think on the fly. We do a little improv here when we're not solving murder mysteries. You know what's up. Sentenced to death five years ago. And now a prison escapee. <sighs> Jeez. This is a heck of a first trial for a rookie. Just relax, Mia. Make small talk and try to relax him. That's our job, after all. Ah. Uh, um. Ah. Uh, so why did you escape anyway? <laughs> Uh, 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 I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Uh, I didn't do nothing. I didn't kill nobody, dude. I never, I never lie. I didn't escape from nowhere. I don't think that voice is going to work either, but you know, it's a little easier on the ears. Uh, but Mr. Fallis, the police just recaptured you two days ago and... Uh... Uh, sorry. I told a little lie just now, but really, I didn't do it. I swear. Oh, boy. Anyway, I didn't do it. Did I mention that yet? No, seriously. I didn't do it. I never killed anybody. Not even nobody. Sorry for asking, but you're on death row, right? I, uh... I'm really, really sorry. <laughs> they sentenced me to die five years ago, but I was tricked, I tell ya. That woman, she lied in her testimony. That's why I got the death penalty. I swear it, I didn't kill her. And that guy could never do that. Hmm. Well, two days ago, he escaped from police the police wagon when it crashed. And about eight hours later, a policewoman was murdered before the police could recapture him. The dump? Then what was that footage we just- Uh, well Mia hasn't seen it, so maybe we shouldn't focus on it. You know, keep came with the continuity. The police believe that Terry Fallis did it. What's with the thing around his neck? Like, what is that a big effing onion ring? Why am I so hungry this series? I don't- Um, after you escaped, did you meet a policewoman? Now answer honestly, Fallis. Mmm, yeah, I did. She's the reason I escaped. Huh? So that much is true. He did meet the victim. This is already... <laughs> but I didn't kill her, yo. I swear. 
She was alive when I left. She was alive. It's true. I can trust him, right? I mean, I should. Oh, boy. We already know how this is going to go. Ha? Huh? What? The... It... It's you! Goto! You're not gonna figure out the truth by just staring at the guy. Y you're Why are you here? I came to see how our little kitten was doing all alone in this big scary lion's den. <laughs> oh god, that's aggressive! I thought maybe you'd like to play. You'd like someone to play with. Uh, where is Mr. Grossberg? Ha! <laughs> that old man is probably still in bed. I bet he's clutching an empty bottle and mumbling in his sleep. Aren't I good enough? After all, it's me. Diego Armando. Uh. Wow. I didn't think they'd just shove it in my face like that. Uh, I, I, I didn't say that you weren't enough. I mean, so Diego Armando, the finest attorney at Grossberg Law Office, is here for me. On what occasion? No, no, no. You got it all wrong, sister. Today, you're the finest. Oh, gosh. How could you not blush? After all, it took an amazing amount of guts to take this case. Imagine an escaped death row convict for a first client. Can't say I envy you. Yeah. Thanks. I'm sure I sure wish I could get out of it, though. Ha! <laughs> Relax. I just heard some good news. The prosecutor for today is fresh out of his diapers as well. Really? Uh, I hope that's not literal. However, unlike a certain somebody who I won't mention, he's earned the reputation as a genius since the beginning of his lawyer career. It's edgy boy, isn't it? That's cruel. No. No! No! A genius prosecutor! Well, it's about time to head in, kitten. You really can't call me that while I work. Oh my god. Sharpen those claws of yours. It's go time. Is it true what they say? Normally that would like be really effing rude, but he's so handsome. Yeah, like, come on. Come on! Come on! A solitary confinement cell for the condemned. Must be the world's loneliest place. And that's what my client ran away from. Can't blame him. How'd he get in there in the first place? <sighs> it's, not, it's not important now. Every other lawyer gave up on him. But not me. When I saw those overflowing eyes and heard that simple childlike voice. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, I didn't do it, yo. I swear. <laughs> uh, I see Mia's point. I just had the feeling that he was telling the truth. <laughs> I love Mia so much, she's got a heart of gold, but god dang, she's kinda crazy though. <laughs> but so am I. Let's get it, bring it on, Edgeworth! Why are, you, why are you dressed like that? What the frick? Oh yeah, how did this guy sound? Dude, I don't ever remember. Court is now in session for the trial of Derry Follis. The, the, the defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution has been ready for a while. Dude, they did make him look younger. What the? Wh He's got like a shine in his eye. Edgeworth, you you look good, bro. You look good. I understand the lawyers for both sides are newcomers. Uh, yes. Is that allowed, Your Honor? I I'm Mia Fey. Miles Edgeworth, Your Honor. Redditor. <laughs> Why did I say that? So you're the new prosecutor uh, everyone's talking about, eh? They say you joined the prosecution's office at quite a young age. At 20 years old, Your Honor. That's literally impossible. How did you get through law school and normal school in two years? Guess a little kitten hasn't earned herself much of a rep yet, huh? Oh my god, he's so hot. Okay. <laughs> so, I want to be. Yeah, I want to be you. Why is he so handsome? I hate it. Oh, he's a bit small. Is, is he? Look at him. Look at him. A hotshot lawyer. My senior and rival. Oh, my God. Oh, my fucking God. He's 20. He still got gray hair. That's effed up, bro. They did you bad, Edgewell. Dubbed a genius as soon as he started a prosecutor. Today is his court debut. Oh, that's just great. Come on, Mia. You can't lose. 
Not to someone younger than you. Come on. Hm. Eh, yeah, young people running a trial. I'm not too sure I feel about all that. Oh, well. Course in session, as they say. Now then, the defendant in this case is currently a felon on death row. Two days ago, he escaped from a police wagon. Is that correct? Precisely. But the defendant is not on trial for escaping prison. On the day the defendant escaped, a policewoman was murdered. So we're here to determine if Mr. Fallis was responsible for her, her death. God, he's on death row either way, though, man. God dang it. Uh. You got it, kitten. <laughs> so it's kind of awkward. I don't know. <laughs> well, then, Mr. Edgeworth, let's hear your opening statement. Yes, Your Honor. It was five years ago. The defendant, Terry Fallis, was sentenced to death in this very courtroom. His crimes were kidnapping, extortion, and murder. The girl he threw off the bridge was only 14 years old. What the heck? But he said he didn't kill anybody. A truly horrible crime. No matter what part of the great, uh, north you're at, I remember it well. At least someone has a good memory here. There's no decisive evidence, so the trial was long and protracted. You don't mind me saying. Correct. But in the end, what finally decided the case was a certain witness's testimony. This, I don't, this is uncanny. Look at that sprite. His eyes are huge. He's literally how to draw anime 101. Listen, I don't. A, a, a witness's testimony? Who? Is it the person that shot? Oh, that's Fallis right there. And who the heck is that? The testimony of Detective Valerie Hawthorne, the person who confronted this criminal. She arrested Mr. Falls, Fallis, at the scene and later testified against him. She said she witnessed Mr. Fallis throw his young victim into the river. That can't be the whole story though, man. Right? Maybe it is. I mean, I don't know. I don't know the guy. I wouldn't have ultimate faith in him, but I wasn't there. I don't know the details. I have no way of knowing. It's probably just easier to, you know, focus on the now. For those who are not aware, Eagle River is well known for its powerful current. Most bodies that fall are never recovered. Ah, that's, that's a shame. So Miss Hawthorne's testimony was the one that put him away. That policewoman you mentioned, that wanna be, uh, exactly the victim. The same woman that killed, that was killed two days ago. Oh my God. Police Sergeant Valerie Hawthorne. You know, she don't look nothing like her sister, bro. I mean, I don't, I mean, Edgeworth don't look like his dad. Oh wait, he's an adopted dad. Yeah, but still, he didn't look nothing like him. Either way, yeah, what, uh, aha, uh -huh. I see. The man who uh, was sentenced to death based on her testimony escaped two days ago. And with only one thing on his mind, to take revenge against the woman who convicted him. That's, uh, ooh. Yeah, that sounds about right. Ah, the truth is becoming clear to me now. Almost as large as my... <laughs> it's a very eye-opening experience. What is up with everyone's eyes in this chapter? Uh-huh. Yes. Yes, I understand. Okay. Quite obvious that the defendant is guilty. What the freak? That is not how things work in court. Wait a minute. That's not right. That's what the at least hear the case before you decide on the outcome, Your Honor. Mm, yeah. Watch yourself, Miss Faye. Not sure I care for your word of choice or your tone of voice. <laughs> looks like a back looks like a Backstreet Boy doing that. <laughs> Young people these days simply don't know how to respect their elders. Literally bite a toenail, bro. I don't know. I don't care whose it is. Just you, You're even younger than me. You're a hypocrite. <laughs> Maybe biologically, but I'm very mature. Now then, Mr. Edgeworth, please call your first witness. I call the defect... The, the, pardon me. I'm a little frazzled. It's my first day. I call the detective who was in charge of the initial investigation. All right. <laughs> hey! What does that mean? His coat is just green because it's dirty? What do you want? It's dry clean only. I don't got all the time in the world. 
witness. State your name and uh, I'm Gumshoe, Dick Gumshoe. I'm the homicide detective in charge of this case, sir. And I know always get my man. I finally got promoted to detective division after half a year. Can you believe that? I thought it'd be a little too soon, but my superior thought. I don't believe anyone asked you that. D hey, ma'am. We all gotta be your biggest fans at the end of the day. You, you got any idea how much work it takes to get promoted? Uh, no, I don't. Enlighten me, please. You, uh, you're, you're really gorgeous. <laughs> Excuse me, what? What? No, seriously, my heart! It's aching for you. Oh god, is this how I sound? How cheesy. Detective, pull yourself together and try to date within your league. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll write you up on contempt of court so quick that something other than your heart will ache. Ah, uh, alright, I'll boom forward on the job. Okay, I got it. Jesus. Now, detective, tell us about the incident. You got a boss right away. So the victim was Serge and Valerie Hawthorne, a veteran of the police force. She was stabbed in the back with a knife and died from excessive blood loss. How much is already stated in the autopsy report? Okay, so the court would like to hear more about the details of the incident. Everything and every, all of it, sir. All right, I gotcha. Let's take a look at the aerial map of the... Of the all right, here you go. Wait, what? This also happened on Eagle River? Uh, this is a sketch in a, of an old suspension bridge. And the river that runs under there is uh, Eagle River. Shaped like an eagle. If you, uh, you're really far away from it. Yeah. The victim and the defendant met there on the top of the bridge. After stabbing her in the back, the killer carried the victim back to his car. He was recaptured at the police checkpoint as they were trying to make his getaway. Sir. Uh, what the heck? Like, oh my god, what? Mm, I see. Uh, great. Was the victim's blood found on the bridge? The victim, Sergeant Valerie Hawthorne, was wearing a thick coat, sir. Much like me. You know, this coat's really expensive. I got expensive tastes. <laughs> Unfortunately, no traces of blood were found on the bridge. Hmm. Hmm, says the judge as well. Mr. Edgeworth, I warn you that I absolutely despise conjecture. There was no blood on the bridge, then you have no proof that they were even met there. Your Honor, please g give me a chance. If you were to listen to the testimony we prepared, I'm sure you'll be convinced. The two of them most certainly did meet on the bridge that day. Was oh, that so? Why, Mr. Edgeworth, I'm not sure I like you wagging your finger at me like that. Ah, so I'm some hoser. You familiar with a hoser, son? Yeah, detective, proceed with your testimony. Oh, you got it, sir. All right. Here we go, Mia. Hang on. Okay, now. Listen carefully, kitten. I, I don't want to say that. It, listen, this game was made in 2004. That kitten thing, now it's it's really... Did you finish your KFC, kitten? Like, it's, 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 the times are different. One little mistake, and this guy will drink you for morning tea. Trust me, and get ready. Okay, I do. Jesus Christ. But if, if Diego is Godo, then what the, what the dog? Why does he have a visor? He spilled coffee on his face? Why is he a phoenix? What the dog? Okay, we shouldn't focus on that. Oh, the game's gonna tell us eventually. Duh. On the day of the incident, an unknown person phoned the sergeant and asked to meet. Sergeant Hawthorne uh, went to Dusk Bridge designated time as uh, okay. That's when she was brutally murdered, sir. The criminal stuffed her body into a car trunk and tried to make a getaway. Was there any blood on the trunk? Mr. Follis was arrested at a police checkpoint we set up at the base of the mountain. That's how we got him. Mm, okay. Well, you certainly have established the importance of that bare bridge. Hmm. Naturally. <laughs> now then, would the defense please hurry up and proceed with the cross-exam? Yes, Your Honor. Cross-examination coming up. Hey, hey, settle down there, kid. You keep trembling like that, you're gonna make me spill my coffee. Oh, we can't have that, can we? Wherever would you get another? 
I'm not trembling. It's just very cold in here, and I did not dress accordingly. Nobody told me the internal temperature. Courtroom can be a cold battlefield, all right? Especially for a beginner. I don't need you to worry about me. I, I mean, I, I mean the defendant, the witness, everyone, everyone's a beginner in here, so... <laughs> you got me there, kiddo. Maybe you should keep your claws out. Show them what you got, kitten. Stop saying it! Stop saying it! By the way, you're gonna finish your cup, <laughs> kitten? It's okay, Mia. Stay calm. Stay calm. Just remember, those court procedure videos you stayed up all night watching. Oh, she's so adorable. I can't- Oh my god. How is Mia's not everybody's dream girl? God dang. Yeah, she's especially mine. Okay, let's- let's not, you know... Let's take it slow. I am surprised. I thought... We'd go back to investigating. I am thoroughly enjoying the mix-up, but as, as, as it were, the incident unknown person phoned the sergeant, asked to meet. Well, this unknown person, you have no idea who they may be? I uh, sorry, I'm afraid I do. Huh? The one who called Sergeant Hawthorne was the defendant, Derry Fallis. What? The, the, the defendant called her? How is that possible? Sergeant Arthur is a very thorough person, sir. She left a note about her phone call by Mr. Fallis. A note? You know you can fake a note. A top secret memo she left inside her desk. All right, let me see that. According to this note, it seems that the one who called her the bridge was indeed the defendant, Terry Fallis. But, I mean, aren't all like, you know, calls from prison, like, monitored? I don't know if that's how they do it in Japan, California, but come on! Whose bright idea was it to keep that note from me? Ha! It's like the judge is even more sure of his verdict now. Listen up, never ask a question if you don't already know the answer. What? That is horrible advice! It's the detective's fault. He's the one that said unknown person. What? What? Hey, now, don't like that face of me. Oh, I'm gonna blush. I said it that way because the prosecutor told me to. Oh my god! This is a trap? F off! With that cute face. I didn't expect him to be so sneaky. Oh, Mia! Mia! Getting catty! Oh god! I don't know if that's the def definition of catty. When I think of catty, it's just like, like a little, like, a cat playing with some yarn. You know what I mean? But that doesn't make any sense. Then why is it called a cat fight? I don't have- I don't have time to just decipher English, bro. I got time- hey, listen to me. Sorry, I'm throwing away the dusky bridge at designated time. Why the dumb would she go there? Also, how would you meet somebody that escaped prison? What the dumb? With no backup? This is fishy, bro. A bridge meet up in the mountains. My, how romantic. But why meet there? That's kind of messed up. She'd say romantic. She's dead. Like, what if he really did it? Uh, it's a very important place to the defendant, that's why. What do you mean by that? If you remember, five years ago, the defendant kidnapped a young girl. He was chased onto a bridge, and it was there that he killed his hostage. And the police... Well, and the place where all this occurred is Dusky Bridge. Okay... Here, place Sergeant Arthur arrested and handcuffed Mr. Fallis. Ha! <laughs> Returning to the scene of the crime. How nostalgic. Yeah, it's really fun. That's where she was brutally murdered. So you say, do you have any proof that there was, you know, a struggle, anything? Was the body of the victim discovered right away? Yeah! We're really on the ball that day. Usually we aren't. Usually it kind of takes a while, but, uh, wow, well, we found the criminal within one hour of the murder. It was great! Even got to say, don't move! We got you surrounded! Oh, I love saying that. It's the greatest. Super! Oh my god, it's so super! Wait a second, isn't there something weird about that? They instantly got there? How did they know? How did they know? The location was a suspension bridge up on the mountains. So how'd they find out about the crime so fast? Sergeant Harthorn must have mentioned the phone call to someone else, correct? Ha! <laughs> That's what had happened? Then she wouldn't have been killed. Mm, how can you say that for sure? 
She never mentioned the phone call from Fallis, but, uh, she left a note on her desk about it. Well, we had noticed earlier, uh, she might still be alive. <laughs> oh, God. I wonder why she didn't mention the phone call to anyone. That's really weird. She's a police officer. She was careful enough to write a note, but not careful enough to bring anybody, especially to meet a convict? Somebody that has killed somebody at that very same bridge? That's not a contradiction, but... What the heck? Doesn't her police... Doesn't her thing say... Uh, uh, I thought I said that she was cool-headed or something. No, that, I think that was... Yeah, he's a hot shot. That's the opposite of cool-headed. He's a bit smug. Look at him. Look at him. He's so stylish. God dang it. He kind of looks like Ichiban. But Ichiban has better hair. Yeah, anyway. Confidential police materials written by the victim. Okay. February 14th, 121. Fall is 430. That bridge. Wear white scarf for identification. What? Identification. Talk to Dahlia. Tell her this time the whole truth must come out. Dahlia? What? The same Dahlia from... I mean, it could be... No, there's no way it's a coincidence. That'd be so silly. What does that mean? The victim's note. Can, can we talk about the rest of this note? The truth, the real truth must come out. The criminal stuffed her body into a car trunk and tried to get away. Is there any blood in the trunk? Mr. Fallis had a car then. Oh, that bridge is way up the mountain, ma'am, and he doesn't look like much of a hiker. The defendant and the victim both went up there by car. I mean, how else, right? The defendant and the victim went up together by car. No, they both went up there by car. So, okay, they, they took different cars. Then where the heck is her car? Was that at the crime scene? You mean the defendant drove his own car? How'd he fit in the thing? Oh, of course not. It was, a, it was a stolen car, sir. He stole it from a young couple that had been waiting at a red light. Oh, God, this gets worse and worse! Car thieves. I'm not sure I feel about car thieves. On one hand, they're despicable criminals that should be punished at the highest level of the judicial system. At the same time, I love me some GTA 2. Oh my god, on my PS1, it's the greatest game. So none of us are truly without sin. Is this guy sure about how he feels about anything? He's so fickle. As part of the stolen car trunk. Oh, thank god. Here we go. Uh, yeah, it looks pretty bad. Naturally, that's the body of Ellery Hawthorne. Pretty sure. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's her. Okay. Whoa, that... That's a... That'll look comfortable. She's gonna hurt her neck. Oh, wait, she was dead already. Never mind. The victim. She was stabbed in the back? Then there... Then there'd be... You know... Come on. There'd be some blood in the trunk. Ha. <laughs> For some reason, men always seem to get stabbed in the back. Dude, I got stabbed in the back, and I'm fine. That dude sucked. He had no, he had no, like, dex. Like, straight up. That backstab didn't even do, like, half my HP. He sucked, bro. We're talking- I have to bring that up every single- I have to bring this up every single time. Because that is so ridiculous. The second day- The second week of high school, you get stabbed in the back and start crying like a baby because you literally got stabbed in the back. That's effed up. But I think it, ironically, did make me more popular. So- I don't know. I don't know. I did cry next to my crush, though, and I don't- I don't know if she liked that. Anyway. We're talking about a woman here? Why do you always have to bring up men? That's not even- that's not even relevant. Wait, Mia's literally talking about me. Holy crap. I- I just got whipped and nae Is- is this misogyny? I, uh, shouldn't joke about that. Anyway. You can't tell from this photo, but the knife was stuck in her back nice and firm. Condition of the body was when it was discovered is very important information. Detective, is there anything strange or noteworthy in the trunk of that there car? Uh, will this be updated? Here's a photo of the trunk, but I don't see anything strange, do you? Huh? Mr. Fallis was arrested at a police checkpoint. We set up. Okay. Do I see anything strange in this? Uh, not yet. I don't think I'll press that. Mr. Fallis was arrested at a police checkpoint. We said, okay, at the mountain. I mean, this doesn't really, but that's certainly some impressive police work there. 
No, actually, it was uh, way too close for comfort. So at that checkpoint just after 5 p.m. Figured that Mr. Fallis might just try to run. What do you mean it was too close for comfort? The two of them arranged to meet at 4.30 p.m. And it takes approximately 30 minutes to get from the bridge to the checkpoint. So they just barely caught him. That was kind of close. Any later and Fallis could have slipped right by. Listen up, kid. There's a big trap waiting for you in that testimony. Uh, I got the feeling, but I don't know where. Walk into it carelessly? It'll leave more than just a flesh wound. Fun, ain't it? Uh, no, it is not fun at all, even though it kind of is to solve the crime. Well, if you want to have any chance at all, you better get some more info. You're going to get caught in a trap. It's best to get caught early. You can always look for contradictions afterwards. Is that, is that what, what is he saying? The ever famous contradictions. I'm sure hope I can find some of those. Okay, focus up, focus up. Did we not press this on the date? I just, okay, let's, let's look at the evidence we have and try and, like, I'm sorry, bro. There ain't no way, there ain't no way, no blood. Got, like, did they not look at the trunk of the car? I mean, yeah, she's clearly dead, but like, the stabbing is important. She could have died some other, mm, I don't know about that. Oh, this, in this, in this statement, talk to Dahlia. Tell her this time the whole truth comes out. That is so fishy. That makes me think maybe Fallis didn't actually kill that girl that day. Dude, then was Dahlia there? Oh, I don't know if I should use accessory information from with outside the case or not. That bridge, wear white scarf. Wait, wear white scarf? Where is that? Oh my God, I just noticed. Hey, 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 buddy boy, what's going on here? What did the defendant have to say about this photo? Well, he always says, ma'am. I didn't do it. I seriously didn't kill her. Yo, that's all he ever says. It's like a broken record. Ah! Nothing. I wouldn't say he didn't do nothing. He's biting that ball like a nut. Seriously, he's gonna crack that thing. At the very least, we know he stole the car. Holy crap, he stole the car. He should go to jail. Uh, well, he's already in jail, sir. He's, uh, we're, we're getting to that, okay. It's just what he always says, Your Honor, and he always says... Uh, sorry. I told a little lie. What? Something like that. Dang it. Well, in case it seems he was caught and arrested. Good. Precisely. I have a contradiction. Hold up, man. He, here's a photo of the trunk, but I don't see anything strange. Well, I do! Okay. Woo. I did it! Witness? Uh... What was it? You gotta got speak a little louder, Missy. Uh, did you hear? You have something to say, Miss Faye? I, I, I'm sorry. I forgot. I, I totally forgot what I was going to say. What? This is, this is the first time I've ever had to actually address someone like that. Uh... You should have practiced before coming to court. I do it every morning. Guilty, 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 and then I rush off. Here we are. Honestly, Miss Faye, I'm not sure I like this. Seriously, you're really cramping my style. <laughs> Say there, little kitten. Want a piece of my coffee candy? I'm not a child. I don't need candy. Well, you're still too young to be drinking real coffee. <laughs> <laughs> what? The hard stuff will knock you out. I don't think I like Mr. Diego anymore. Come on, Mia, shake it off. You're a lawyer. Dang it! Detective! Ah, uh, yes? Uh, can I help you? This photo. You said that there was nothing peculiar about it. Is that correct? Uh, uh yeah, that's what I said. For sure. Yeah. Well, then I suggest you take another look at the note written by the victim. Uh, note, uh... It's very clearly says, wear white scarf for in identification. The caller must have forgotten what the victim looked like. Thus, this special request. Uh... Well, maybe she dropped it. I don't know. I have one very simple question for you, Detective. Where is this white scarf? It can't seem to find it in the photo. Can you? 
Uh, well, if I had my reading glasses on, uh, well, to be honest, we didn't find it in the trunk either, ma'am. So, you just stopped there? You should have looked for it. I'm not much of an accessory guy. I, I didn't think it mattered. The caller told her to wear it to identify herself, so I'd expect she just, she did it, right? Well, Miss, De Miss Edgeworth, you, what do you have to say about all this? Huh. You see, the answer is simple. I have the white scarf. That's right. All this time, this cravat is actually a scarf. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I see the defense is a little lacking. What? No, no. The scarf you're searching for so desperately. Is this the one perchance? That's not white, Edgeworth. What? Huh? Where'd you find that? On Dusky Bridge. I was there first and decided to conduct my own investigation. God dang it, he's good. But isn't that obstructing justice? Hey, why did you tell us that? We're the cops! I made a decision to keep all pieces of evidence in my personal satchel. That is so, you could, that is 100% obstructing justice. What if you lost your precious satchel? Or there are too many items to pick up in your fanny pack, bro. It's the safest place I know. That hot shot sure has flair for the dramatic, eh, kid? <sighs> uh, you have no idea. It's not exactly white, as the caller requested, but as you can see, it's close enough for what it was intended for. Mm, I don't know, man. Would she write down white if she didn't possess a white scarf? That's weird. She could have just said scarf. Looks like it spent some time in the mud. Not surprising. It was drizzling on the mountain that day. Prosecutor Edgeworth, he was intentionally hiding the scarf the whole time. Can't he just hide as much evidence as he wants? That is ridiculous. What the? The girl will accept the scarf in evidence. Why the heck not? I'll have, just, you know, just put it up here next to my pez. Now, if the attorney for the defense is finished embarrassing herself, I'd like to move on with the testimony. That is all right with you, isn't it, Miss Faye? <sighs> this is the trap Diego was talking about. He, he want to call him Goto. What if they aren't the same guy? That was my identical twin, Diego Armando. I, however, am Goto Armando. And we're not even that related. <laughs> we're, not, we're not even fraternal twins. We just kind of look together. It's weird how genetics are, huh? You know, I kind of like that. I hope that's the truth. <laughs> but no, I think they're the same person. Boy, I'd like to wrap this scarf around his smarmy little neck. Oh, Mia. Does Kitten got some claws? <laughs> you stop the tickle. Stop it. It's weird. Very good. Now, if we're done with this mud-covered scarf business, the prosecutor moves to establish conclusively and with hard evidence this time that Miss Hawthorne and Mr. Fallis did indeed mate on, meet on the not mate on the day. That is not what I meant to say. Ew. <laughs> Excuse me. They met on that bridge that day. Furthermore. We will show exactly what occurred there. That sounds quite promising. I can't wait to hear all about it. Boy, oh boy, this is getting good. Why does he sound like a president? I don't even know which president. Okay, uh, everything is moving as is at his whim. Great. Don't forget, kitten. There's a reason why everyone considers this kid a genius. A genius, huh? <sighs> He's only... <sighs> But didn't Edgeworth, like, fake evidence back in the day? I don't, I don't know. I'm scared. Oh, my God. Can we even win? Actually, there's an eyewitness who was there when the incident took place. This photo was accidentally taken by the witness. I bet that's Dahlia. It shows the Vic was uh, wearing the scarf, sir. It was drizzling that day. Unfortunately, it's a little hard to see what's going on. Anyway, the criminal shoved the victim down from behind and stabbed her in the back. That must have been when the scarf fell. That's horrible. What the heck? I gotta believe in my client, though. Looking at this photo, what do we got here? You really get the sense that that bridge is very high up in the air, it is. It's about 40 foot drop from the bridge to the Eagle River down below. 
The Eagles. I love those guys. Mr. Edward, who took the photo anyway? Let's just say that it was a well-intentioned third party. Ah, so we can't call them in for questioning. Perfect. Uh, but still a potential witness. So why isn't the person in the courtroom? Uh, they said they absolutely did not want to testify. That is so fishy. What? What? What the heck? The person in question is very, how should we say, delicate, your honor. I can't, I, I can't believe this. I can't, what? What? Besides, as long as we have this photo, we see no reason to compel them to testify. Mm, I'm not sure I feel the same way about that. Then again, they did ask nicely. Well, uh... So as you can see, Terry Fallis had both the opportunity and the motive to murder. I think it's quite clear at this point what happened on that bridge. Uh, yeah, you got that right. The truth is becoming clear to me. Ooh! Ooh! Huh? What? What? What is he? It's quite obvious. He's clearly guilty. Like, dude, come on. N no, not again. That's not fair. No, 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 no. That's not, I object. That's stupid. I haven't even done my cross-examination yet. Oh, yeah. Kind of forgot about that. Sorry, lady. What do you mean, hmm? What do you mean, I'm sorry, lady? Just let me do it. Thank you. Jesus Christ. What a handful. Oh. Actually, there's an eyewitness who uh, saw the incident take place. Well, where the heck are they? Who Who is this witness? She's a college student! No! A female college student. Hmm. Well, I also was one, so I can't say that's suspicious. That's right. Meaning she's female and a college student, ma'am. <laughs> she doesn't do well in front of people, or she would have came to testify. That's ridiculous. We... Maybe so. But as the attorney of the defense, I have the right to cross-examine her. Where it... God, it's been a while since we heard that. For the time being, we're not relying on the witness's statements. That is all. That is literally not... That is ridiculous. W what is that supposed to mean? The prosecution has other, more decisive evidence. Our case doesn't rest on the vague testimony of a female college student. Apologies for the pause. That did sound a little misogynistic, Edgeworth. I'll let it go, though. A female college student, eh? Hmm. It means she's a girl, sir. A girl that goes to school. Higher education. If you absolutely must hear her testimony, you'll have to give us a good reason why. What? What? This is this is a kangaroo court. This is th this judge is more incompetent than the normal judge. Please tell us the evidence. Uh, please uh, tell us about the most decisive evidence in question. Right, the photo was actually take, accidentally taken by the witness. Shows the Vic wearing this scarf. I don't want to press this, but I think it's a good idea. The victim is wearing a scarf in the photo, all right. So about the witness, who took this photo? Was this person, what was they? Do, what were they doing in the mountains? She was taking photos of wild flowers, apparently. There are many unusual types of flora at the mountain, you see. People in the area say it's because of the spirits that live there. Spirits? Oh God, I love a good brew. Now that you mention it, in this photo, there's a cloudy fog-like thing. Oh God, is that a ghost? It's a ghost, I don't believe it. Your Honor, no, I don't. I don't think it's a ghost. Uh, it's just a, it's just a fog. I, it was drizzling that day, you see. It's a little hard to see what's going on here. Is there a reason to press that? I don't think so. But I want to hear more Gumshoe. I can't lie. I love him. He's so funny. Unintentionally or... Unintentionally, I don't know. Drizzling, huh? How peculiar. Oh, yeah, that's right. It was a light rain coming down. The whole place was all dreary and... Well, depending on your outlook, a little dreamy. But not as dreary as the mood that's in this courtroom right now. <laughs> You're not funny. He's really not. I thought it was kind of silly at best. Uh, looks like a cold front moved in. That is the fastest way to just like, man. You're not funny. You're ugly. You're stupid. And you're poor. 
What, what am I good at? Absolutely nothing. The point is that the area is quite damp. There was even some fog. I even slipped and fell on the bridge. That was really something. Then she could have she could have fell in this form by the victim, found on Desky Bridge. She could have tripped and just, you know, been wearing it. Like, you know, it's possible. The the criminal shoved the victim down from behind and stabbed her in the back. But she's facing forward in the photograph. What? Is that part of the witness's testimony as well? The testimony of the witness I'm not allowed to see? Huh? Oh yeah, of course it is. She saw the whole thing. Only photographed some of it though, ain't that something? He pushed the victim hard in the back and she fell down right on her stomach. Oh, that's mighty painful. Oh, I remember that happening once myself. I was really brutal. That, we don't need to know. Stop oversharing. Are we talking about seeing someone get pushed? Or are you the one getting pushed? What? Does it mean that you pushed someone down like that once? I, why am I focusing on this? Stop, stop. With his mind-boggling tales and the way he said brutal. I wonder if he's Canadian. Wait, wait, is that, in is that intended? I tried to do a Canadian accent. It kind of just ended up becoming American. So I've never been to Manitoba, but you know, I'd like to. <laughs> There's nothing even to do in Manitoba except fish. No, that can't be true. Is it? I don't know. Save your nasty look for the right person. Kid. Ah. Uh -huh. Take a look, poor baby. The court record seems to have wet itself. <laughs> Slowly and surely, Goto's voice just keeps turning into Duke Nukem, and I can't, like, undo- I don't remember how he's supposed to sound. What does he even talk? I don't know. What's a baby gonna do, wet itself? I don't know- I don't know what Duke Nukem says, but it's been forever since I played Duke Nukem. Forever. Hey, w watch where you spill your coffee. The court record, huh? Okay, look in the record. What am I looking for? There's your scarf. Well, hmm. That's the thing that comes to mind. Is, yeah, if you get pushed down like that, and besides, don't you like, I mean, okay. This is gonna sound like level 4,000 stupid, but I don't really use a scarf because it's always like 100 degrees where I live. What can I say? Some like it hot. Stomach full. So like, the scarf mostly like covers up your neck, right? And you kind of put like some of the parts like in front of you. That's how it works, yeah? So maybe it'd be weird if it's pushed on her back and covered in mud. No, that disproves my theory entirely. Wait, I'm a dunce, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. The other discrepancy could possibly be, yeah, how did... How did she get pushed on her back when she's facing forward? Maybe she tried to run and that's, yeah, that's... Wait! In this photo, yeah, the scarf is like... In front of her like that. Dumb. Then what the heck do I say? Uh, must have... Okay, that must have been when the sc scarf fell. I'm gonna try this, get Goto's opinion. And then, you know, in other words, there was a struggle between the criminal and the victim, right? Oh yeah, that's what the witness said. Shame they didn't take a picture of it so we had more proof. Oh, what are you gonna do? Looks like she didn't remember about the scarf. But from what she said, it sounded like a pretty violent fight. Ariel's wet from rain. The bridge was probably wet too, which would explain why the scarf was all covered in mud. But you can't get mud on a bridge, right? At least that amount of mud. There's something about this testimony that's still bothering me. Talk about a surprise, I had no idea there was a photo. Jeez. So what do I do? You really still believe him? Huh. <laughs> Mr. Crybaby, I mean. Of course I do. <laughs> so little kitten believes in fairy tales, eh? In that case, the answer's obvious. What you believe is the truth. That means that somewhere hidden in the testimony is a contradiction. One huge contradiction waiting to be discovered. That's your chance. Uh, that was not as hope that was not as helpful as I was hoping. Seems the Vic was wearing a scarf. Uh Shove them down from behind. But if it happened right there, 
then how'd they get mud on it? I'm just going to press this and see what happens. Okay, we didn't get it. Cur curses. Your Honor, what do you think of this? I don't think anything of it at all. How about you? I... Uh, uh, I guess I don't think anything about it either. Haha. <laughs> we're just two peas in a pod, right, Mr. Judgy? I'm afraid we're not. They don't have those where I live. Penalty. You made me remind me of the things I missed out on in life, living in Manitoba instead of the great USA. You Yanks are all the same. What? Wasn't a problem. Couldn't just let it slide. Oh my god. Come on, think, dude. Think. What am I? What am I missing? Where are my head veins? Ugh. Wait. The criminal shoved the victim down from behind, stabbed her in the back. If there's, if there's mud on the effing scarf, which we've established is, where is it? Wait. <laughs> yeah, literally. Where is it? Like, <laughs> but it's not here, of course. Then why is only the scarf muddy, and not the rest of her? How do I say that though? Dusky Bridge, crime photo. Would that work? Because, yeah, I mean, I don't know, dude. If we've already established, yeah, I guess the bridge is all muddy. From, let's just say, Fallis's, uh, you know, tracks. Fine. Whatever. Not important. Then at least be consistent. Where is it on her, uh, peacoat there? Criminal shoved the victim down from behind. I don't think that's the case. I don't know where to press this, though. Either here or here. That just mentions the drizzling. This is mentioning how she fell from behind. That might be it. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think we got it. Yes, dude! Woo! That took a while. So at the time of the crime, there was a light drizzle coming down, correct? Yeah, you can ask the meteorologist. Those guys are never wrong. Yeah, generally soggy atmosphere. Yeah. Well, I have evidence that doesn't go with a soggy atmosphere. There's a photo of the victim's body that was found in the car trunk. What do, what do you have there? Considering the conditions at the scene of the crime, something isn't right. Well, by all means, please enlighten us at what it is. Okay. What's... what... what... yeah, like... Her, her coat. Her tummy. It does not have food. That's so sad. Naturally, the answer is right here. The the coat. As far as I can see, there's nothing strange about it. That's the problem. Recall the testimony. Were the conditions of the bridge that day all covered in mud? And oh, it was raining so ever bad. Dusky bridge, so wet and muddy. If the victim really had fallen down on her stomach on top of the bridge, then where's the mud? Bud! Oh! She's done it! Hey, that's a good point. The other day I fell on a muddy street and my gorgeous playoff beard was befouled. Befouled! Utterly befouled! Covered in grease and mud! I do admit that the crime scene was quite wet that day. However, that doesn't mean the top of the bridge itself was muddy. If your honor had fallen the wait, if your honor had fallen in the shower instead of a muddy street, your glorious hockey beard, pride of the legal league, would be wet, but not muddy. Oh, I wouldn't even like to think about it. Fortunately, I have yet to test that. Still, your point is well taken. Can you prove that the surface of the bridge was muddy that day? Oh, I get what he's saying. Tomp. He's saying that, yeah, the this mud came afterwards. The sir- Wait, no, what? Then we're screwed! A real man wouldn't stand for a taunt like this. That's good, I'm not a real man. Neither would a real woman, so I'm going on the counterattack. Of course I can. Hmm. Here's the evidence that proves the surface of the bridge was muddy. Yeah, I mean, that mud had to get there somewhere! That was found on the dusky bridge, right? The evidence is this scarf that you just graciously deposited to us earlier today. It should be obvious. If the scarf fell onto the bridge and got this muddy, it means the bridge was totally slathered in mud. Ugh! No, I can't, I can't be outwitted by this novice. B B Edgeworth, I, I cannot believe you. I am so upset. This is not canon. Edgeworth would never say this. I'm so, I'm, I'm so, I, 
Same to you, boy. <laughs> she's not a, she's not, she's not white bread at the store. That's ridiculous. She's a lawyer, come on. Miss Faye's assertion makes perfect sense to me. Nah, 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 she's dumb. Dummy, 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 dumb, dumb, dumb. I do admit that there appears to be a contradiction, but still, the, contra the condition of the victim's coat and her scarf. However, the real question is why is there a contradiction? I don't know, dang. For every contradiction, there exists an explanation. Let's look at the possible explanation in this case, shall we? All right, what's the harm? It's like he's really giving me a choice. Have to go with the flow, that's kind of how this works. Well, Armando's having fun. You're doing pretty well, kid. For a kitten and all. There's a, a, a lot of awkward talk in this courtroom today. Jeez. M Mr. Armando, please. No matter what he says, a contradiction always comes down to a lie. It's either the victim discovered in the trunk, or the witness's photo showing the defendant and the victim, or the witness's testimony that stated she saw the moment of the murder. Just relax and think it over. Pretty simple, isn't it? Yeah, so simple. The false evidence. It's one of those three. Uh, okay. That's, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got, we got, wait, I got, yeah. What do you say just now? I'm not sure I like that. What? That, that wasn't me. That, that, that was him, him, the coffee aficionado. Over here. Do I, do I sound like that? I don't. So, how, I, I know you're hard of hearing, but still. Mm, sorry, couldn't hear you. Uh, either way, this court is now in the habit of accepting false evidence, you know? Blame it on him, your honor. He's the one trying to slip false evidence in a court. Oh, oh, dang, they're calling him out! We won't let him. We'll expose his evidence as the flimsy scam it really is. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna do what he said. The false evidence in this court is... Probably the scarf, honestly. That's still making me mad. Let me see his photo again. I mean... We can't see her face, and it is obscured, but she's wearing the same outfit here. Ah, uh, so I don't. Um, I'm gonna say it I'm gonna say it's the witness's testimony. That's made up. It's a no-brainer, really. Uh, yeah, to totally no-brainer. <laughs> Obviously, it's the witness's testimony. That's suspicious. During his earlier testimony, the detective pointed out a crucial fact. The criminal shoved the victim down from behind and stabbed her in the back. Now, is that testimony exactly what the witness claims to have seen? Uh, yeah, it's what the witness told us. Well, then, the witness is probably wrong. So, come on. That testimony is filled with holes, then. After all, the victim's coat isn't dirty at all. Yeah, that's right. It's not just true. It's the truth. There was a truly decisive witness in this case. I'm certain that boy, Wonder over there, would have called them in the first place. So he, and he didn't. Yeah. Your Honor, the defense requests a cross-examination of the eyewitness. Get her. Get her. Where is she? The testimony presented so far is not only vague, but contradictory as well. I don't care if she's in class. Get her in here. Well, Edgeworth, what do you say to that? Appears that they will need to hear from the mystery, mystery witness after all, despite her, uh, the dislike of public uh, speaking and all that. Uh. <sighs> you should brace yourself for the brutal truth, then. Hmm? Your Honor, the prosecution has no intention of hiding the witness from the court. We are prepared to present our witness at any time. All right. Please bring him out, then. Post haste. What the heck? What the heck? Why isn't he even scared, like a little bit? Mr. Edgeworth said kind of worries me. Yeah, no kidding. What does he mean by the brutal truth? I just don't know. But it can't be good. Oh, God. Now let's proceed with the testimony. 
Mr. Edgeworth, please go right ahead. Thank you, Your Honor. The prosecution summons the woman who saw the event that day with her very own eyes. This is it, Mia. The battle begins here. Oh, God. Well, we know she's a liar. <laughs> Witness, what is your name and occupation? Those creepy alien eyes. I hate you. Ah! You made you made Phoenix eat glass. That's effed up. Everyone is so silent that I can hear their hearts going pitter patter. Even at Edgeworth, and that's odd. Hmm. Oh, when I look at you, how can I put it? I'm starting to think the age difference ain't that bad after all. Oh my god, that's awful. You look as scrumptious as a double, double, double in a dozen donut holes. Ew! A 50 year old. Okay. That's your 20 years old. A 50 year old man says that to you? Dolly is a freaking troll. She's got. Thank you. I feel like I want to hurry up and hand down a verdict just to have a bite of your succulent dough. <laughs> This is bad. This is really bad. Hey, not so fast. What the? Huh. Men. As I said before, this witness is very sensitive and delicate. I would ask the court to please exercise care when addressing her. Do please be gentlemen. Uh, oh, y yes, indeed. Th thank you, Edgeworth. Uh, you are a true gentleman. <laughs> uh, Miss Ray, could you, you, you could learn a lot from this man on how to act proper. What the heck? He's literally, he's literally, he's like a crow. Uh, he's a crook. If he's such a gentleman, he sure doesn't act one towards me. And that's the real crime here. No, no, definitely the murder, the, the lady that died. That's a crime too. Um, sir? Huh? Oh yes, my dear. What can I ever do for you? I would lay down my life to even be in your presence, which I already am. Well, the choice is obvious, isn't it? This is my first time, so I'm sure I'll make a, a lot of mistakes. Anyway, I just want to say I'm sorry for all the trouble I might have caused. Oh, not at all. Uh, it's no trouble at all. What, man, dude, what the fray, dude? She's literally just showed up, bro. She ain't like Mia. You know, smart and, you know, capable. Like, come on. She's not even hot! She's not even hot, bro! She's, she looks like an alien freak! I'm sorry! Now then, if we could all start... I mean, stop. Judging each other by their appearance, may we please have a uh, name and occupation? My name is... Um... Melissa Foster. What? <laughs>